Well, the latest CBS News poll finds 50% of Americans approve of the president's handling of the Libyan crisis, 29% disapprove. Joining us this morning, Arizona Senator John McCain. He's the top Republican on the Senate Armed Services Committee. Senator, good to have you with us. Uh, you had been calling for this no-fly zone for some time. I do want to get first your take on the breaking news. We just heard a little bit from David Martin, but about the plane that went down in Libya, a pilot, a weapon systems officer on board, uh, both were told had just minor injuries. This really, though, hits home for so many Americans and makes this a bit more real. How prepared do we need to be that there could be, in a situation like this, perhaps a different outcome? Well, Erica, I think that it's, uh, uh, from initial reports, it was mechanical failure, not enemy fire. And uh, we're obviously happy that uh, the news reports are that the pilot and crew were rescued. Um, but uh, we are in a combat, and our pilots are trained uh, to fly in combat, and let's hope there are no more mechanical failures. I don't think that should detract from the fact that the no-fly zone has been implemented uh, very quickly, much more quickly than many in the Pentagon predicted, and it has been very effective. Now we need to have a no-drive zone, unfortunately. Uh but let's stick with the no-fly zone for just a minute. You say it's been very effective. The headline in the New York Times this morning uh, reads, the objective is near. But there's some confusion as to what exactly the objective is here. What is your understanding of the end goal? Well, my view of what the objective is was to stop what was going to be a near uh, massacre as the Qaddafi troops uh, entered the suburbs of Benghazi, which would have uh, been a, a, a horrible bloodbath if uh, Qaddafi had been able to take Benghazi. That was the immediate objective. The overall objective is to uh, stop him uh, from continuing to uh, murder uh, his uh, own population. This is a man with American blood on his hands, who has committed acts of terror in the past. And uh, our policy, the United States policy, as articulated by the President of the United States, states that he should go and he should not stay in power. So if the goal then is to get him out, uh, then does that ultimately mean that the U.S. could end up arming the rebels to help make that happen? Oh, I think that that's very possible, and in fact, I hope so, that uh, if not the U.S., uh, through other countries, there's already reports that the Egyptians have been supplying with them with some weapons, uh, uh, not only giving them the weapons, but it also requires some training. Hopefully, some more of Gaddafi's um, army and military will come over to the side of the rebels. Look, for a long period of time, the momentum was clearly on the side of the anti-Qaddafi forces. Then, obviously, they were pushed back. You, with the effective use of air power, among other things, including weaponry and better training. Now I believe that we can get the momentum reversed back in the other direction. But it's going to be tough because there are some cities like Misrata that they're already inside of. When you talk about your hope to actually arm the rebels, how, how confident are we that these folks, that A, we know who they are, and B, they're not connected to some terrorist organization like Al-Qaeda and will not ultimately turn on the United States and U.S. allies? Well, what we know of them so far, obviously, are that uh, the former justice minister and others uh, uh, are, and a government has been formed and uh, part of that government. but. Um, uh, Qaddafi is a proven quantity. He had the blood of Americans. It's on his hands uh, because he was responsible for the bombing of Pan Am 103. He has been involved in other acts of terror. And uh, by the way, it does take time, as it did during the period of the Russian Af uh, occupation of Afghanistan. But we were able to, to provide them with some weapons and wherewithal to cause the Russians to leave Afghanistan. Um, so we can do it. But right now, I think the message we need to send to the Libyan army under Gaddafi is don't leave your barracks. Don't leave your barracks and you'll be fine. But if you go out and continue to kill your own t uh, countrymen, you're going to face the consequences. And I think it could have a salutary effect. Senator John McCain, thanks.